Blessings to you as we gather in his wondrous and glorious name. Today we'll be talking about prayer. And I am sure that all of us can learn something from the Lord's word today on that. I'd like to make an announcement uh, for all those who know uh, Bill Whitham, that he died this past week. And uh, we'll be saying a prayer for his family today. So. And the Lord be with you then as we come together to worship, and may he bless us and be with us in all things. And may the word be an inspiration to all of us. We'll begin with the opening hymn.
Let us rise. Let us begin this day by calling on our Lord and Savior in heaven above to be with us in our time of worship and praise. Let us begin then in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Oh, almighty God, merciful Father. I, O merciful sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you are your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy innocent and bitter sufferings and death, I will bless Son Jesus Christ to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful lady. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as an ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you, and you shall glorify me. With my whole heart I cry. Answer me, O Lord. I will keep your statutes. I call to you, save me, that I may observe your testimonies. I rise before dawn and cry for help. I hope in your worst. My eyes are awake before the watches of the night, that I may meditate on your promise. Hear my voice according to your steadfast love. O oh Lord, according to your justice, give me life. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver you, and you shall glorify me.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh Lord, let your merciful ears be attentive to the prayers of your servants. And by your word and spirit, teach us how to pray that our petitions may be pleasing before you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Genesis chapter 18 verses 20 through 33. Then the Lord said, Because the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and their sin is very grave, I will go down to see whether they have done altogether according to the outcry that has come to me. And if not, I will know. So the men turned from there and went toward Sodom. But Abraham still stood before the Lord. And Abraham drew near and said, Will you indeed sweep away the righteous with the wicked? Suppose there are fifty righteous within the city. Will you then sweep the place and not spare it for the fifty righteous who are in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to put the righteous to death with the wicked, so that the righteous fare as of the wicked. Far be that from you Shall not the judge of all the earth do what is just? And the Lord said, If I find it Sodom fifty righteous in the city, I will spare the whole place for their sake. Abraham answered and said, Behold, I have undertaken to speak to the Lord. I, who am but dust and ashes, suppose fifty or five of the fifty righteous are lacking. Will you destroy the whole city? for the lack of five. And he said, I will not destroy it if I find 45 there. Again he spoke to him and said, suppose 40 are found there. He answered, for the sake of 40, I will not do it. Then he said, oh, let not the Lord be angry and I will speak. Suppose 30 are found there. He answered, I will not do it if I find 30 there. He said, behold, I have undertaken, undertaken to speak to the Lord. Suppose 20 are found there. He answered, For the sake of 20, I will not destroy it. Then he said, oh, not, <clears throat> oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak again, but this once. Suppose 10 are found there. He answered, For the sake of 10, I will not destroy it. And the Lord went his way, and he, when he had finished speaking to Abram, and Abram returned to his place. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The epistle is found in Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 through 19. Therefore, as you receive Jesus Christ, the Lord, so walk with him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. See to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental, elemental spirits of the world, and not according to Christ. For him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily, and you have been filled in him, who is head of all rule and authority. In him also you were circumcised with a circumcision made without hands by putting off the body of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through faith in the powerful working of God, who raised him from the dead. And you, who were dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made alive together with him, having forgiven us all our trespasses, by canceling the record of debt that stood against us with its legal demands. This he set aside, nailing it to the cross. 
he disarmed the rulers and authorities and put them to open shame by triumph, triumphing over them in him. Therefore, <clears throat> let no one pass judgment on you in questions of food and drink or with regard to a festival or a new moon or a Sabbath. These are a shadow of the things to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. Let no one disqualify you, insisting on ascetism and worship of angels, going on in detail about visions puffed up without reason by a sensuous mind, and not holding fast to the head, from whom the whole body, nourished and knit together through its joints and ligaments, grows with a growth that is from God. This is the word of the Lord. Praise Thanks be to God. God. Let us rise for the hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 11th chapter. <laughs> Now Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. And John taught his disciples, and he said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone who is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation. And he said to them, Which of you who has a friend will go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves, for a friend of mine has arrived on a journey, and I have nothing to set before him. And he will answer from within, Do not bother me. The door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, though, he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend. Yet, because of his impudence, he will rise and give him whatever he needs. And I tell you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened. What father among you, if his son asks for a fish, will instead of a fish give him a serpent? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? This is the Gospel of the Lord. Let us now profess our wonderful faith in the wondrous words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. May be seated for the hymn.
you join with me in a word of prayer? Glorious ever-living Father in heaven, we come to you this day and ask you to be with us during this time of your wondrous word. May it be an awesome word that strikes our hearts and minds. And may you bless myself, dear Father, your messenger, that it will bring forth the glory of your name and the wonders of your love and grace. Thank you so much, dear Lord, for all the blessings you bring to us. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. Grace, peace, and love to you from our wondrous, gracious, and glorious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. What goes through your mind when you are asked to say a prayer? Well, I can tell you the first thing that goes through your mind. That's not my job. That's the pastor's job, right? Yeah, of course it is. No. It's scary, I know. When you think about praying in front of somebody, it's really scary because you know, oh man, I might mess up. I might say the wrong thing. And boy, I sure will not be as eloquent as a pastor is, right? <laughs> But that's the key, isn't it? It's not, prayer is not about, not about any of that. Prayer is about what comes from within, from the heart, by the faith that we've been given in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Look at Jesus himself as our great example. In our text today, in Luke 11, 1 through 13, the first thing they point out is this. Now Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. So Jesus was the example. That wasn't the first time Jesus had gone to a certain place to pray. He went off by himself quite regularly. Now, one of the things we always like to say is that, well, you know, I'm really busy, you know. I mean, I really, you know, I, I really have so many things going on. But you know what? If we take the time to pray, God always gives us the time to do what we have to do. There's no doubt about that. And we'll talk more about that in a little bit. But when you think about prayer, when you think about the idea of prayer, you think about Jesus first and foremost. Jesus is the one who taught us all to pray. Now, I'm not going to do an exposition on the Lord's Prayer today, but I'm going to do more about the idea of prayer itself and what prayer has to offer us. Jesus himself was the man who brought forth the true God, the true man, who taught his disciples how to pray. And at the same time, we know that Jesus held three offices, that of, that of prophet, priest, and king. And in this particular situation, we're talking about Jesus as our great high priest who comes to us in the order of Melchizedek, the king of righteousness. And that king of righteousness, Melchizedek, is Jesus himself. Jesus who then went and gave himself for us as the great high priest. How did we do for us? He took all of our sins upon himself. In the Old Testament, in the time of the people of, of Israel, one of the things that they were required to do was to take a goat, and upon that goat, they were to place all the sins of the people upon that goat. And so that goat then was then sent out into the wilderness. There, of course, comes the great word scapegoat. And we have that sitting before us in Jesus Christ our Lord who became our scapegoat, who took all of our sins upon himself. And when he did that, he then went to the cross willingly and freely to give of himself for us and for our sins, to bring it and make sure that we as we sit here today, know that when we heard those words of absolution, that they came not from me, but they came from Jesus himself. In the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. 
brings a smile to your face, doesn't it? That all those sins have been taken away. And now that Jesus has ascended into heaven, he serves us as our great mediator, as the great high priest, who then takes our prayers to the Father in heaven. And that's the other part of it, too, that you need to remember is the idea that the Holy Spirit is there to take those words to the Son, the Son to the Father. And that means that it doesn't matter if we don't make any sense at all when we pray, but that the Holy Spirit makes sense of it for us and takes it to the Father in heaven. And this brings us to the essence of prayer itself. How do we begin the Lord's Prayer? We begin the Lord's Prayer how? We begin it by saying, Our Father who art in heaven. That's the essence of prayer. We're not just talking to some, somebody on the street. We're not talking to, to some, somebody else, a teacher, politician, whatever the case may be. We are talking to someone we have a very personal relationship with. Our Father who art in heaven. Our Father. What a blessing that is to know how much he has done and accomplished for us. He's our Father who created us. He's our Father who supplies all of our needs. He's the one to whom we pray. And we have this wonderful personal relationship because he sent forth his one and only begotten Son for us. And then on top of that, when the Son ascended into heaven, the Holy Spirit proceeded from the Father and the Son and calls us and puts us together in that one true faith in Jesus Christ, our Lord. So knowing that we have that personal relationship, knowing that we're praying to one upon whom we say, Abba, Father, we are saying what? We are saying, yes, you were there, you listened, and you have treated us as your special child here on earth. And you do hear us. We can pray to him then for what? We can pray to him for, first of all, for, as the, as the Lord's Prayer points out, all of our physical and all of our spiritual needs. Our spiritual needs to pray every day for his grace to pray every day for his love, to pray every day for all the things that he does and accomplishes for us, to pray every day that he brings to us that joy and, of course, that hope, that hope of life everlasting, that hope that is within each and every one of us, that hope that we have because of Jesus Christ, that hope that we live with, that we are but strangers here in heaven is our home, right? Heaven is our home. In the physical side, we all have our days, right? We all have our days. A couple weeks ago, my arthritis decided to act up. You know? And my shoulders, my hip, my knee. I was a mess. You can ask my wife. <laughs> She said, I got to get out of here. He's just a pain and you know what, you know, so. But then you pray, you ask for help, you know, and I went to the doctor. We took care of everything. And I'm doing fine now. But the bottom line is we can pray for physical healing. Doesn't mean we'll get it all the time we want. You know, it's, it's, I, I really get upset with people who say what? Who say that, well, if you have a strong enough faith and you pray hard enough, you are going to be healed, right? No. That's in God's hands. It's by His will and by Him alone. But you know, there is a great healing that takes, it's going to take place for all of us. You know what that healing is? That healing is dying and going to heaven. That is the greatest healing. Sometimes we forget about that. We sometimes see it, you know, we get so filled with grief and mourning when we lose loved ones that we don't sometimes see the beauties, the beautiful side of it, and that is that person is now, just like your friend Bill, is now with the Lord in heaven. 
greeted by him as he entered those wonderful gates of heaven itself. And of course, you know, there was a special place up there in heaven for all Lutherans it's behind a wall. One day, Peter was going down with a friend of his, and he said, Who, who's behind that wall? And he gave Peter, St. Peter says, oh, that's, that's all the Lutherans. They think they're the only ones here. <laughs> but, <laughs> didn't know you could accommodate a day, right? <laughs> Anyway, then we go from there. When you talk about asking for all these different things, how, do, how does God answer us in prayer? How does he answer us? Well, that's really simple. He may say yes. He may say no. And he also may say wait. It's like when you have children, you know, we got a 12-year-old boy and all of a sudden he wants a Jaguar, right? Yeah, we're going to go out and buy him a Jaguar, right? <laughs> That's just what we're going to do. He's going to be disappointed when we don't, when he gets a little matchbox Jaguar under the Christmas tree. You know, he's not ready for it, right? And when we pray for things, doesn't mean we're ready for it either. Doesn't mean that it's our time. Doesn't mean it's God's time. It's in him and him alone. Then you think about all these wonderful blessings that God brings to us in prayer. Just having that time with Him. You know, we can, we can do what? We can enter and exit each day with prayer. Prayer doesn't have to be eloquent. Prayer doesn't have to be long. Prayer doesn't have to be formal. Prayer can be something that comes straight from the heart. And coming straight from the heart means that that's coming from faith. We can pray to God for all kinds of things. In the middle of the day, <clears throat> when something good happens, something we didn't expect, you know what we do? Take a moment and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you. That's it. That's it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. And you know the adage, when you get upset, before you speak, count to ten. No, don't count to ten. Stop and say a prayer to God before we open our mouths. Now, if I could do that more often, I'd be better off. You know? <laughs> That's the difficult thing. Prayer is a beautiful and wondrous personal time with God. It's our time to communicate with Him. It's our time to move forward each and every day through when we come to church, we pray. When we're at home, in the mornings we pray. In the evenings we can pray. We can do devotions at home. We can do all kinds of different things that help us and lead us into praying. You know, and if we're not, if we're not real comfortable with it at first, then you open your catechism and you look for Luther's morning and evening prayers. You look at the Lord's Prayer, of course, and you look at... Uh, other prayers. If you have a hymnal at home, they got all kinds of prayers in the front of it for people to follow and go with. Them. But what's important is that we take the time to do it. And why do we do that? Because God blesses us all the time with those things. He blesses us each day with his loving grace. And that special time with him lifts our day. It makes it special. And it makes it part of our time with Him and our time in faith with Him. So I, I hope and pray today that we will always move forward in His grace and love and that we continue to work on praying. Not, nobody's perfect at it, and as much as I like to think, I'm not either. But the bottom line is that we have so much to pray to God for and to give Him. Remember what he said here in the text about the friend who goes to his other friends and asks for three loaves. He says, well, don't bother me. I'm in bed with my kids. I don't want to be bothered, right? But eventually he gives in and gives to him. And that's the other thing about prayer, being persistent and being consistent. Those two things are important. So I say to you today, let us pray. Let us pray. Now, may the peace of God, which surpasses all of our human understandings, keep our hearts 
and our minds in that one true faith in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's rise for the offertory. <coughs> may be. All that we have is thine alone, a trust, O Lord, in thee. Amen. <clears throat> in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For trusting hearts that turn to our Heavenly Father in all joy and sorrow finding in his fatherly goodness and will all that we ask, seek, and need to desire, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For faithful pastors to speak God's word of warning and comfort to us, that trusting in the intercession of Christ, we may be drawn to repentance to his cross, seek shelter in his mercy, and in him escape destruction. Let us pray to the Lord. For the gift of the Holy Spirit, that enlightened by the word of Christ, and homes may not be places of deceit or confusion, but dwelling, dwellings of truth, and that husbands and wives, parents and children, young and old, and all who live alone would be built up into him who is the head. Let us pray to the Lord. For civil leaders who serve in accordance with the righteous judgment of the Lord of hosts, condemning what is evil and approving what is good, and that all nations may be brought to see the wisdom and glory of Christ and dwell together in peace and humility, let us pray to the Lord. Lord and for all those who suffer in body, mind, and soul, especially place into your gracious keeping, dear Father, all those listed in our bulletin this day, you will be with them and their families and watch over them and keep them in your loving care today and every day. And if it's by your will, we ask you to place your healing hand upon them and bring them back to health. And dear Lord, today we place the Wyndham family into your gracious keeping. We know that Bill is with you now in your ever-loving and glorious kingdom. We pray that you would help this family to their mourning and grief. That you would bless them each day and help them and hold them tightly in your arms as the great good shepherd. Be with them, watch over them, and keep them in all things. And dear Lord, we ask you to do this and say this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Today also, dear Father, once again we place into your wondrous and gracious keeping all of our men and women who serve in our military. We pray that you would watch over them and keep them, especially those in harm's way. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We also pray and place into your keeping today, dear Father, all of our first responders. We ask you to be with them and their families. Watch over them, protect them, and comfort and strengthen them in all things. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Today, dear Father, we also give thanks to you for the rain that has come. We pray that you will continue to bring that rain to quench the dry earth. We ask you to be with all farmers and help them also. And dear Lord, we pray this. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Heavenly Father, we ask your blessing and look to you as the giver of all good gifts. 
Make us ever eager to come to you in prayer and thanksgiving as your Son has taught us. By your Holy Spirit, bring us to behold in Christ the fulfillment of those things for which we pray. Your holy name, your coming kingdom, daily bread, forgiveness, shelter in temptation and deliverance from every evil. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us now join together in that wondrous prayer that Jesus taught us and his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Let us pray. O oh Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, that at all our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Continue with our closing
Good to be seated. It's good to be with you again. I really appreciate these opportunities. You know, even though I'm a retired pastor, you don't ever really retire. And as the joke goes, you just get put out to pasture. So, anyway, it's a great blessing for us and a wonder to be here. And uh, I know that there's uh, an announcement about the preschool. <coughs> Thank you. 
I, uh, for all who are interested, I'll be having a Bible study after the fellowship time. Now, you don't want to miss that fellowship time because I saw all that food being brought in while I was in the back greeting people. So there's a lot of good food back there. Lord's blessings and go with his love.